Hello everyone, PaleoNerd back with another creature profile. Today we'll be going over one of the largest theropod dinosaurs known from the southern hemisphere, Mapusaurus. Specifically going over its discovery, classification, appearance, diet, environment, possible cause of extinction, and its appearances in pop culture. First off, what is Mapusaurus? Mapusaurus rose, or Rose's Earth Lizard, refers to the Mapuche, or Earth People, the indigenous people of southwestern Argentina. While the specific name has a double meaning, referring both to the rose-colored rocks in which the fossils were found, and Rose Wetland, sponsor of the expedition that found the fossils. This animal was a giant cacarodontosaur found in the pine coal formation in southern Argentina, which dates from the mid cenomanian to the late Turonian of the late Cretaceous period, about 97 to 93 million years ago. It was among the largest of its kind, estimated at a length of 12 to 13 meters or 40 to 42 feet long, a height of 3 to 3 and a half meters or 10 to 11 feet tall at the shoulder, and a weight of 5 to 6 US tons. Falling somewhat behind Tyrannosaurus as one of the largest terrestrial predators known to have walked the earth, as T-Rex weighed 7 to 9 tons. Even when compared to other theropods in the southern hemisphere, Mapusaurus was likely not the largest, as others like Giganotosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus, and even Spinosaurus were just as big or even bigger than Mapusaurus. Mapusaurus is known from several specimens uncovered in the Huancol Formation during an Argentinian-Canadian-led expedition from 1997 to 2001. And the genus was described in 2006 by Rudolfo Coria and Phil Curry. Before then, the remains were thought to belong to Mapusaurus's close relative Giganotosaurus, thus stirring the misconception that Giganotosaurus coexisted with Argentinosaurus, when the two were actually from separate fossil formations. Upon its discovery and description, Mapusaurus has had a very consistent classification within the family Carcharodontosauridae, specifically lying within the tribe Giganotosaurini, which it shares with Giganotosaurus and Tyrannotitan. It is also closely related to other Carcharodontosaurids like Carcharodontosaurus, Torovenator, Acrocanthosaurus, Concavenator, and more. It is the youngest member of Giganotosaurini, and is commonly considered the sister taxon of Giganotosaurus, which lived immediately before Mapusaurus and may have been a direct ancestor. Unlike other animals featured in this series that are known from fragmentary remains, we have found many Mapusaurus scale specimens which, added together, represent most of the animal's skeleton, so we have a pretty good idea of what the animal looked like. In terms of physical appearance, Mapusaurus is pretty typical for a Carcharodontosaur, looking especially similar to Giganotosaurus with its long skull filled with knife-like teeth, small three-fingered arms, long muscular legs to support its body, and a decently long tail. When hunting, its giant head would be its primary weapon, with its arms being used mostly to help it latch on to bigger prey. Like other Carcharodontosaurs, Mapusaurus was a carnivore, and likely the apex predator of its environment. Hunting sauropods like Argentinosaurus, Limesaurus, Cathartosaurus, and Choconsaurus, as well as unnamed iguanodonts and possibly even hadrosaurs based on footprints found in the Huancol Formation. Given that its skull wasn't as wide as those of Tyrannosaurs, and the fact that its teeth are very thin, it is unlikely that Mapusaurus was built for holding on to a struggling prey animal, as its skull wasn't built for the strain and its relatively small teeth could easily break in a struggle. Instead, Mapusaurus likely killed its prey by briefly slashing into the animal's flesh and then waiting for the animal to die from shock and blood loss. For larger prey like sauropods, 
Mapusaurus may have also used a technique dubbed flesh grazing, using its razor sharp teeth to tear chunks of flesh off their prey and then feasting on the chunks, allowing it to feed without actually killing its prey, which has been famously depicted in the documentary Planet Dinosaur. The Huyn Coal Formation where Mapusaurus was found is believed to represent an arid environment with seasonal streams, and as such fossil bones rarely preserve here. This hasn't stopped paleontologists from uncovering fossils, including those of four different sauropods, the Titanosaurs, Argentinosaurus, and Chocomosaurus, and Rabacosaurids like Pithartosaurus and Limesaurus as well as unnamed iguanodonts and possible hydrosaurids. Theropods include the abelosaurids Ilocalicia and Scorpiovenator, fellow percarodontosaurid Torovenator, an unnamed Unilogene, and the mysterious Gualicho. Non-dinosaurian animals are completely absent from the formation so far. Although plants have been found there which support the idea that Huang Kul was basically a desert. Pretty much the only possible indicator of Mapusaurus behavior is a bone bed of various Mapusaurus specimens in the Huang Kul formation. Specifically, the remains of at least seven individuals of various growth stages have been found in relatively short proximity of each other. Similar congregations have also been found for Allosaurus, Albertosaurus, and Aspletosaurus, supporting the idea that certain large theropods may have lived in large groups to hunt particularly large or difficult prey. However, there is also the possibility that the Mapusaurus did not all die at once, perhaps being an accumulation of corpses like a predator trap. Even if the Mapusaurus did die altogether, they might not have hunted together. Instead, the bed may be evidence of mobbing behavior similar to Komodo dragons today, as opposed to an organized pack like modern wolves. The Mapusaurus may have simply converged to that location for food, and then killed each other over the scraps. The desert environment of Coincol may even suggest that the bed is the result of Mapusaurus killing and eating each other during the dry season, which would explain the abundance of juvenile specimens at the bed, as they would easily be killed by the stronger adults. Like most animals in this series, Mapusaurus's exact cause of extinction is not entirely certain, but we might have an idea. Mapusaurus disappears from the fossil record around the same time as Spinosaurus and Cesiomasasaurus, about 94 to 93 million years ago which as established in their creature profile was likely a result of habitat loss when the earth began to heat up and the swamps they lived in were swallowed up by the ocean as well as the disappearance of fish they relied on for food. This climate change may have also brought about the downfall of Mapusaurus, although how exactly is difficult to say. It likely wasn't the extinction of its food source since the giant Lancosaur titanosaurs like Argentinosaurus continued to prosper up until the Coniacian, about 86 million years ago, less than 10 million years after Mapusaurus disappeared. It is more likely that Mapusaurus went extinct as a result of its changing environment, as Argentina would change from an arid environment to being much wetter. This may have eliminated many open spaces, replacing them with dense forests, which would impede Mapusaurus' ability to hunt. After its extinction, Mapusaurus' niche would be replaced by other large theropods, first by Megaropterans and finally by Abelosaurids, where their smaller size would have been able to take more advantage of the growing forests. However, Mapusaurus was not the last Kerkarodontosaurid, as Shao Chilong lived in northern China until the end of the Turonian of the, of the late Cretaceous, about 92 million years ago. Additionally, other remains possibly belonging to Kerkarodontosaurs 
have been found in South America and the Middle East, which date to the Campanian and Maastrichtian of the late Cretaceous. Although their identification as Procarodontosaurs is, is questionable. Regardless, Maposaurus was far from the last of the Crocarodontosaurs. Having only been described 13 years ago, Maposaurus hasn't been as prevalent in pop culture as, say, Tyrannosaurus or Spinosaurus, but it has made many notable appearances. In some documentaries, like Chased by Dinosaurs and Dinosaurs Giants of Patagonia, it is actually called Giganotosaurus, but since it is depicted alongside Argentinosaurus, I'm considering both of these as Mapusaurus. Giants of Patagonia actually, call, actually does call the animal both Giganotosaurus and Mapusaurus, just to add to the confusion. Thankfully, Mapusaurus has appeared in at least three other pieces of media as the proper name. The documentary Planet Dinosaur, the Fossil Fighters video game series, and the anime series Dinosaur King and its corresponding merchandise. In terms of accuracy, Planet Dinosaur and Giants of Patagonia are pretty spot on, with only minor problems like pronated wrists and shrink wrapping. Dinosaur Click King is close behind, being much more stocky than the real animal, and many of its proportions are off like its head and arms. The Chase by Dinosaurs design looks more like an incredibly large Allosaurus than a Carcarodontosaur, but it's much better than Fossil Fighters. Mapusaurus, or Mapo as it is called in the games, has two different designs. One for the second game, Fossil Fighters Champions, and a redesign for the third game, Fossil Fighters Frontier. Both designs are incredibly inaccurate compared to the real animal, with the first design being adorned with multiple horns that the real animal never possessed, and the second design looking more like a plant than a dinosaur. However, this can probably be excused since it is explained in the games that the revived dinosaurs, or vivasaurs as they're called, have elemental powers that their real life counterparts didn't have. Overall, Mapusaurus has had a pretty good track record of being depicted accurately, and I definitely look forward to, being, to it being depicted more accurately in future documentaries. That wraps up this latest creature profile, but before I end the video, I thought it would make more sense if the polls for future creature profiles are placed at the end of creature profiles rather than natural history videos. Also, rather than including so many choices that I'll probably never get to, I'm instead going to list four prehistoric animals that will be the next four creature profiles and the amount of votes each animal's animal gets will simply determine the order in which I'll release the respective profiles. The candidates are as follows. Erosteon, Dryptosaurus, Megalania, and Rugops. Be sure to vote which profile you want to see first, and I'll announce the winner in the comments below about a week after I upload this, to give people plenty of time to vote. That's all for today, be sure to like and subscribe, and be on the lookout for my next video, which will be the scientific analysis of Jurassic Fight Club's 10th episode, River of Death. I hope you all learned something new today, and as always, this is PaleoNerd, signing out.